Hello and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we will explain what the different types of discharge from a sewage treatment plant are. Properties that are not connected or have access to a low sewer network will need a sewage treatment plant in order to safely dispose of household waste. If you currently use a septic tank to discharge waste, this will have to be upgraded due to the recent changes in legislation. In this video, we will explain the different types of discharge from a treatment plant that you can use. So, firstly we'll start of what is a waste or treatment plant. Due to the introduction of the general binding rules that came into effect in January 2020, septic tanks are no longer allowed to discharge untreated waste into a watercourse, as it could be classified as a pollutant which could lead to a fine being issued. A sewage treatment plant works in a similar way to a larger sewage treatment works used by your local authority, except they are smaller scale and intended for domestic purposes. Sewage treatment plants introduce bacteria into the cleaning process to break down the waste into a clearer effluent before it is discharged. This is less damaging to the local environment and ecosystem and far kinder to it as well. So once the wastewater has been treated, what are the different types of discharge from a treatment plant? The first type is a soakaway. There are different types of soakaways available, including a soakaway chamber, a rubble pit, a borehole. However, when it comes to a sewage treatment plant, a drainage field must be used as a soakaway. This is because it features a network of perforated piping to offer a level of water treatment as it is being discharged. Before the drainage can be installed, a percolation test has to be carried out to calculate the size of the hole required and if the ground is suitable for use for this purpose. The next is a reed bed. A reed bed is an alternative drainage system that is used to improve the water quality before it's discharged into the local environment. It does so by using the natural ability of the reed to transfer oxygen into the soil which activates microorganisms to eat away at any contaminants located in the effluent. The size of the reed bed is determined by the flow volume, with horizontal flow and vertical flow reed beds being two of the most common forms. Another option is to discharge into a flowing watercourse. An example of this would be a river that connects to a nearby lake, sea or ocean. Other forms of watercourses include a brook, stream, gale, rhine, culverts, leet or beck. And a watercourse can be only used if it flows all year round and doesn't regularly or seasonally dry up unless there's a drought. Discharges can also not be made into enclosed ponds or lakes. The final option is to a local sewer network. The first thing to do is to check with a local water company to see if there's one located nearby. You must then make an application to have the treatment plant connected to the sewer network by the local water company, which, all, which may also require a payment. This will differ from case to case. However, if you're in a current treatment system that is served by a local sewer located within 30 meters from your property, you may have to connect to that instead. If you found this video helpful, then please leave a like on it and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a future video.